is I think that the price of solar upstream on the manufactured side will be greatly reduced in the next three to five years. Currently, you could probably, a solar cell to manufacture is probably about $2.80. It sells probably for about $3.50. There are some companies now, thin film for solar, that claim that their manufactured or cost of goods is about $1.40. Um, some of the companies that I'm involved with, we're trying to also hit that mark with slightly different technology. Um, I think in the next five years there are going to be tremendous product innovation, both in thin film, low, what, we, what are called con low concentrators. Um, I can talk about that after if you are interested. Um, it's very exciting to see just the amount of um, capital that's going into funding new companies, uh, lots of entrepreneurs with great products. And also, I would say, unfortunately, not a lot of those companies are in New York State. And it's a good question to ask why that is the case. This course is done in a few places in the city here. The Bronx Community College have a course, um, the Hudson Valley, um, and uh, SUNY Farmingdale out in Long Island uh, do a, a course regularly on PV installation and design. There may be others, but. It's a very good place in Colorado because you can get, you know, you, could, you have to spend two weeks there and you can actually do a real installation. Solar Energy International. Also, um, when I got started, I went out to Florida. The Florida Solar Energy Center is very good also because they do a lot of the testing there. They have very good facilities. So I actually like those two places. And then there's someone here in New York State um, who teaches courses um, that help people get certified with NYSERDA, um, Gabe Kanoa, which uh, is, I think, generally the lead course, which is very good as well. Solar Energy Industry Association, um, which John and I are on the board of, uh, actually has training programs occasionally. Dr. Gakinoff uh, conducts the courses. I don't know of any new announcements, but if you go to NICEA.org, you'll, you'll see announcements about it there occasionally. On, on behalf of NICEA here, historically, we haven't had, I mean, we've had, we've had a lot of good, very good connections with um, with several groups, um, but we need to do more from an industry standpoint to reconnect with some of the groups that put on, or all of the groups that put on this today, tonight, um, because we're not going to reach any of our goals without um, organizations like yours. And I think that the follow-on meeting that's scheduled for, for the 17th, um, you know, I will be there, and um, we can talk further about how we may be able to you know, create an ongoing relationship um, so that um, we can make sure that uh, we make things, these things happen. Also, um, you know, as a side note, there's a lot of things that you guys could do, and when I say you guys, I mean these organizations, I mean the activist organizations that are so key to this. Um, you know, a lot of things that you guys can do to pressure public entities and other organizations that as an industry, we cannot do just because we have to do business with them all the time. Is, so, uh, is NABCEP, and uh, that is the, the you know the exam uh, one should be probably aiming to go for. Uh, well, that's debatable actually, but anyway, um, it's uh, sort of like the qualification that's most recognized for being a PV installer. Um, there's courses done in a few places in the city here. The Bronx Community College have a course, um, the Hudson Valley. Um, and uh, SUNY Farmingdale out in Long Island uh, do a, a, a course regularly on PV installation and design. There may be others, but, yeah. Um, there's a very good place in Colorado because you can get, you know, you, could, you have to spend two weeks there and you can actually do a real installation. Solar Energy International. Also, um, when I got started, I went out to Florida. The Florida Solar Energy Center is very good also because they do a lot of the testing there. They have very good facilities. So I actually like those two places. And then there's someone here in New York State um, who teaches courses um, that help people get certified with NYSERDA, um, Gabe Kanoa, which uh, is, I think, generally the lead course, which is very good as well. Solar Energy Industry Association, um, which John and I are on the board of, uh, actually has training programs occasionally. Dr. Gabe Kanoa uh, conducts the courses. I don't know of any new announcements, but if you go to NYSEA.org, you'll You'll see announcements about it there occasionally. Three major things that are laws that are hopefully going to pass. On the federal level, it's the extension of the solar tax credit um, and accelerated depreciation. 
There are no Senate or House numbers for that for that yet because they were taken out of the uh, the last energy bill uh, that just passed with the new cafe standard. So we're waiting for new numbers. Okay. There's the uh, property tax abatement, which is uh, in Albany as well. It's going to be a separate law that uh, hopefully will pass. Uh, no numbers yet on what they are, so we'll keep keep you all posted. And the uh, the other one is the uh, net metering law that we're trying to get passed again. Uh, didn't pass the last session, is going to come in sort of repackaged form for the uh, next session. Uh, no numbers yet, but if you keep in the loop, I mean, that's the one thing the industry needs help with the most. Uh, usually when we're there giving testimony, when we're there talking to politicians, when we're writing letters, it's us ourselves. And we know that the general public likes solar, so we want to help us out. Besides, you know, literally getting involved and working in this industry or buying a system, you can write or call or email or fax or just stop the local representative you have in the street and tell them you want solar and especially if we can get you these numbers, specific bills that they must vote for, okay? Uh, there's the one federal bill, right? And then there's the two state bills. Uh, but they, you know, the, the stuff, anything that the mayor would do for uh, tax credits or whatever is going to have to get approved in Albany anyway. So, The best way to, cre to create a critical mass is to create a market. A market requires a buyer and a seller. <coughs> and the seller so buy solar systems. Very simple. <laughs> I think in, historically, I'm speaking on, on behalf of Nicaea here, historically we haven't had, I mean we've had, we've had a lot of good, very good connections with, um, with several groups, um, but we need to do more from an industry standpoint to reconnect with some of the groups that put on, or all of the groups that put on this today, tonight, um, because we're not going to reach any of our goals without um, organizations like yours. And I think that the follow-on meeting that's scheduled for the 17th, um, you know, I will be there, and um, we can talk further about how we may be able to, you know, create an ongoing relationship um, so that um, we can make sure that uh, we make things, these things happen. Also, um, you know, as a side note, there's a lot of things that you guys could do, and when I say you guys, I mean these organizations. I mean the activists organizations that are so key to this. Um, you know, a lot of things that you guys can do to pressure public entities and other organizations that as an industry we cannot do just because we have to do business with them all the time. So, um, you guys have a little longer, or a, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a little more uh, that you guys can do in some level on, the, on those levels. So, um, I think just this is a great start and I, um, I'm fully committed to participating in it further. We just beat you to it actually on that. And you can also, uh, you know, there, there are similar tools done by uh, you know, many authorities and such around the region and, and the country which you can get involved in and, you know, see how existing systems are. Uh, I think a lot of this starts, you know, conserving, you know, ourselves and, um, you know, bringing down our own loads and that. And then also promoting our, you know, finding ways of, of promoting and pushing energy conservation because that's maybe less uh, contentious in uh, getting some programs like that in place. Um, and just, uh, you know, personally, this is something like what John said here as well, you know, this all ties into our carbon footprint as well. And so, you know, anything that can be done on a state or federal level that um, can, you know, you know, find ways of reducing our carbon footprint and putting legislation in place to maybe price carbon properly and so on will help drive solar and all the other you know, related technologies, whether that be wind or solar thermal or any one of the other ones.